Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit, and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God, and he deepened that for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week, I've started a series entitled Effortless Change. And in the past, I have taught up to four and six weeks on this. I'm making this just a little brief two-week teaching. It's kind of a summary. And I've got this little booklet that's a 55-page summary of the teaching. We're offering this as a free gift to you. No charge, no obligation. I just really believe that this is a life-changing thing. I probably get more testimonies of changed lives through this teaching than anything that I do. So please get this. It's a free gift. This is a 200 plus page book. We're asking for a donation of any amount to be able to get that. And then we also have CDs, DVDs, and a USB and a study guide on this same thing. So we'll be giving out all of that information at the end of the program today. I've already started talking about how that uh, change can be an effortless process in your life. It doesn't have to be this traumatic thing. And the key to it is the Word of God. The Word of God is a seed. That's what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. And in the same way that this physical world operates off of planting seeds, and then you get a tree and a harvest out of that, Well, in the same way, the kingdom of God operates off of the Word of God being a seed. And so this is really important. I've been using this parable that Jesus taught out of Mark chapter 4, verse 26. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. And I've spent quite a bit of time on that. And then in verse 28, it says, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. That phrase, of herself, comes from a Greek word, automatos, and it's a word we get automatic and automatically from. This is saying that when you plant the seed of God's Word in your heart, it just automatically starts producing what God's Word promises. It starts bearing fruit. But you have to leave the seed in the ground and you have to keep it there. If you'll do that, it'll bring forth fruit of itself. And look at this in verse 28. It says, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. You know, I've never heard anybody else teach this. I've heard one other person who heard me teach it, who took it and and taught it. But... uh, I'm not saying that I'm the only person who's ever received this revelation, but I am saying that it's rare. There's not very many people just by the virtue of the fact that I haven't heard anybody else teach on it. But notice it says, The earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. It didn't say that the seed brings forth fruit of herself. You know, this is what most people think. I've heard a person one time take a little uh, apple seed. And they said, anybody can count the number of seeds in an apple, but nobody can count the number of apples in a seed. And I agree with the point that they're making, that there's just huge potential. This one seed you plant in, it produces a tree, and then it produces hundreds or thousands of apples, and then in each one of those apples is multiple seeds, and on and on it goes. There could be millions and millions of apples that come out of this one seed. So I agree with the point that they're making that there is just huge potential in the seed. But this verse, Jesus is teaching, and he said the earth brings forth fruit. The seed doesn't bring forth fruit. The earth brings forth fruit. The seed is talking about the Word of God. The earth is talking about our heart. That's what the Word of God gets planted in. And it's the earth that brings forth the fruit, not the seed. And... I know that this may sound a little confusing to people, but the seed is the catalyst that activates the ground. The ground is what actually brings forth the seed. Let me turn over here to Genesis chapter 1 and just read this to you. 
In uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed. In both of these verses, it's saying that the earth brought forth the fruit. And then when it comes to the animals, it says in verse 22, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the sea. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And then in verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind. Notice it says that all of the plants the things like that, the animals, it says that the earth brought forth. Now, this is something you're going to have to think of for just a moment, but it's the earth that actually has all of the nutrients, all of the chemicals, all of the, everything that is needed to produce a tree, to produce an animal and stuff like that, and it just needed a catalyst to make it come to pass. You know, again, the scripture says that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God that lives and abides forever. It calls the word of God a seed. In the same way that a woman, everything that it takes to produce a child is already inside of that woman. The only thing that's needed is a seed. And when the seed is sown, it activates all of the things that God created inside of a woman and, and that woman brings forth a child and gives birth to a child. Did you know in the same way, the earth that God created has everything in it that God, that we will ever need on this planet? Again, I know that most people don't think this way, but did you know that everything that is above ground was at one time in the ground? You can look at a skyscraper. Did you know that the glass came out of sand and other chemicals that they mixed together. The steel came out of the ground and they have just processed that and they've learned how to melt it and put chemicals with it and they've made steel. They, uh, you know, anything that's in our phones today, everything that is above ground, whether it's a skyscraper, whether it's a building, whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal, anything that is above ground at one time was in the ground. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. Did you know that in the ground was everything that it took for there to be animals, an elephant, a giraffe, a dog, any animal that is above ground was at one time in the ground. That's exactly what it says right here in verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. When God created dirt, Dirt is miraculous. You know, I had a man one time come up to me and he said, you are as plain as dirt. And he did not mean that as a compliment. But now that I understand that when God created dirt, in the dirt is everything that we will ever need. Did you know all of the petroleum and all of the things that we're using today to power the world, it all, it's all in the ground. It was in the ground. Everything that we have, everything that we use today, anything. I know most people haven't thought about this, but you can just think about it. And anything that is above ground came out of the ground, including animals, plants, trees, uh, you know, any of the fabric. If you are using, if you're wearing a shirt that's got cotton in it, did you know that that cotton grew out of the ground? If you've got wool, well, those animals came out of the ground and they ate things that come out of the ground. and and everything that we ever will need is in the ground, but it doesn't do anything until something activates that ground. And see, this is exactly what it says over here in Mark chapter 4, where he says that the man plants the seed, he sleeps and rises night and day, the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. The earth brings forth fruit not the seed. The seed activates the earth and the earth is what brings forth the fruit. And notice the terminology here. It says bring forth fruit of herself, feminine. 
In the same way that a woman has everything in her that it takes to produce a child except the seed, the seed activates what's in that woman and the feminine, the, the, the seed is masculine, the uh, ground is feminine and it brings forth fruit of herself. And the reason all of this is important is because when you get born again in your spirit, you are identical to Jesus. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. And I could go on and on uh, with scriptures that make that point. In your spirit, everything that you will ever have in heaven is already in your born-again spirit. But just like ground, that ground had elephants, giraffes, dogs, cats, everything was in the ground, but it didn't it didn't produce those animals until God said, until He spoke the word, let the earth bring forth. When that seed entered into the ground, then all of these animals came out of the ground. When the Lord said, let the earth bring forth grass whose seed is in itself, well, then that earth brought forth. The seed activated the earth. It's the same thing. This word right here is the seed of God. And in your born again spirit, You've already got healing. You've already got deliverance. You've already got peace. You've got prosperity, power. Anything you ever need is already in you when you get born again, but you have to take the seed of God's Word and sow it in your heart. And when you do, the earth, that born again heart, begins to start bringing forth fruit automatically. And in the same way, that a woman cannot have a child without having a seed sown in the same way a Christian cannot bear fruit without having the seed of God's Word put in their heart. But in the same way that God created women so that when the seed is sown, it just automatically begins to start bearing fruit. Well, in the same way, God created your born-again heart that when the Word of God enters into your heart, it germinates and it's your, your heart starts bringing forth. This part of you that already has the fullness of the Godhead bodily in you, all it needs is a seed to activate it and to begin to start releasing this power. Man, if you understand this, this, this would just change everything. It would change your whole approach to life. The average Christian is praying and begging God for healing, prosperity, joy, peace, deliverance, whatever, and you're spending a tremendous amount of time just begging God and pleading, oh God, please do something. And the average Christian is frustrated because they aren't seeing the manifestation of all of those things that they're praying for. But if the average Christian, instead of just begging God, would just simply spend time taking God's Word, reading it, meditating in it, and letting that seed of God's Word germinate in your heart, it would just automatically start producing the change in you that God desires. You would automatically start receiving healing. Psalms 107.20 says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. God's Word will produce healing. If you need healing, instead of praying and begging and, oh God, why aren't I healed? Why don't you take scriptures, seeds, promises, like 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. You take that seed, you plant it in your heart, and when you do that, I mean automatically, you conceive something. And there, just like when a child is conceived, there's a nine-month process before you see the birth. But, you know, you, you just have learned to live with it. And all of us came as a result of this seed being sown. And then there was a nine-month process and then there was a birth. Well, there is also a process. When you take the seed and you put it in your heart, you have to give it time. And it may take nine months. But if you were to take the promises of God's Word that promise healing and meditate in them in a certain amount of time, depending on how much effort you put into it, how focused you are, how committed you are, 
how defensive you are that you will not let the word of somebody else come and steal from you what you're believing. If you were to take these things, I guarantee you in a certain amount of time, it may not be nine months, it might be a year, it might be a month, but in a certain period of time, you will see the birth of that healing. It's, it's really that simple. It's that simple, but it's not that easy because I guarantee you this whole world system is controlled by the devil and he comes immediately to steal away the word that's been sown in your heart and I can guarantee you that there is going to be a fight against that word. You're going to have the way you were programmed and the way you were brought up to go by what you see and by what you feel more than what you believe. That whole way you've been taught is going to come against that seed and try and get you to uproot it and quit believing and quit mixing faith with it. You will have friends, even people who love you, come against you and tell you that you're crazy for believing the Word of God. The Word of God isn't real. You can't trust the Word of God. See, our whole world system, they don't honor the Word. I actually was listening to a call-in show one time on the radio as I was driving, and they were discussing some social issue. I forgot what it was. But anyway, a woman called in, and she says, the Bible says... And the guy who was the host of the program cut her off right there and he says, look, we aren't dealing in any of this make-believe fantasy stuff. We're dealing with facts only. And he just began to ridicule her for exalting what the Bible says. Did you know that that's, way, that's the way that this carnal world is? They don't honor the Word of God. They don't believe the Word of God. They don't value it. They don't exalt it. And I can guarantee you, the moment you start taking God's Word and putting it in your heart, you're going to have this world system and all of their devaluing of the Word of God come against your value that you are placing on the Word of God, and you're going to be tempted right there to exalt their opinion above what the Word of God says. So it's as simple as what I'm saying. The Word of God is an incorruptible seed, and in your born-again spirit, you've got everything that it takes to produce total victory and total joy, total healing, prosperity, whatever. It's all in there, but it has to have the seed of God's Word to activate it, and when that happens, the earth will bring forth fruit of herself. Your born-again spirit will start automatically releasing this supernatural power that was placed inside of you when you got born again, but it won't happen without a seed any more than a woman is going to have a child without having a seed sown. You do not get pregnant by standing close to somebody who uh, is pregnant or by standing close to a man. He's got to impregnate you. He's got to sow that seed. Man, this is, this is just amazing. You know, in the natural realm, we understand this. And if a woman was praying for a child, and yet she never had a physical relationship with a man, we would think that that woman is absolutely crazy. There was only one virgin birth, and you aren't going to be the second one. It's not going to happen that way. you got to have a seed song. Did you know it's the same thing in the spiritual realm? And yet we've got lots of Christians that are praying for healing, but they hadn't sown a seed. I've had Christians come to me before and say, would you please pray with me that I'd be healed? And I say, so what scripture are you standing on? And they'll say, well, uh, you know, I don't know exactly where this is. I'm not even sure if it's in the New Testament or in the Old Testament, but doesn't it say something like, by his stripes we're healed? Or, I, you know, they aren't familiar with it. They can't quote it even. They can't find where it is. That's like a woman saying, isn't being just close to this man close enough? He's five feet away. Is that enough for me to get pregnant? I'm not going to explain all of these things on the television, but uh, no, you got to have a little bit more intimacy than that. And did you know for you to say, well, doesn't the Bible say some place that he will bless what I set my hand unto, that he wants me to prosper and be in hell? I think that's in the Bible someplace. If that's your approach, you haven't sown that seed. You don't get pregnant by drinking the water after somebody else who is pregnant. You don't get the Word of God by just standing close to the Bible or having the Bible on your nightstand. You need to take those seeds off of this page and put them in your heart. And when you do, that seed will activate the life of God that is already in your born-again spirit 
and that seed will just of herself automatically start producing that victory in your life. Man, this is powerful. If this is true, which it is, then I've given you a key to seeing the power of God work in your life. Did you know it was back in 1996 and I had been in ministry for 28 years at that time. And I was seeing some good things happen, but we were struggling financially. I was taught that ministers are supposed to be poor, that uh, you just, you know, God will supply your needs, your absolute necessities, but not any of your wants. And I was taught that preachers were supposed to be poor and stuff like this. And so I was struggling financially. The Lord showed me I was going to be going on television and I knew I needed an increase in finances and I needed my attitude changed. I needed something changed because it wasn't working the way it should. I was being turned over to collection agencies and uh, it was a pain. So you know what I did? I took scriptures. I took seeds and I wrote them out on a legal pad, one of these yellow legal pads. And I wrote out about two or three pages of nothing but scriptures that talked about prosperity and how God would supply all of our need and how he would bless the work of my hand and, and on and on. He gives me power to get wealth, Deuteronomy 8, 18. And I took all of these verses and I just started meditating on those scriptures. You know what I was doing? I was taking those seeds and I was planting those seeds in my heart. And it took about two years period of time. And I think it could have happened quicker if I would have given more attention to it. But I was busy with the ministry and other things and I just didn't focus on it exclusively. So in my case, it took about two years and all of a sudden, I mean, in one day, I got a revelation on prosperity that changed my life. And it's a progressive thing. I'm still growing in it. But I mean, immediately my finances begin to change. I used to go and hold a meeting and I'd get about $10,000 in offerings. And that was just enough to cover the expenses of the musicians that I brought in, the extra speaker, renting the place, the travel, the food. And it would be about 10000 and I would just about break even. Did you know the week after I got that revelation, I went and held an exact meeting just like I'd done before. And instead of getting $10,000, I got $23,000, $25,000. And my finances just began to change because I had taken the seed of God's Word and planted it in my heart. And when I did that, it started producing finances. And I know that there's some of you that think, I don't believe it works that way. Well, then it won't work for you. But that's what I did, and I believe that the same thing will work for anybody who will do it. The earth will bring forth fruit of herself if you will plant the incorruptible seed of God's Word in your heart. It will activate everything that God has placed on the inside of you, and you'll see it come to pass. I've got this little booklet. It's a 55-page summary of the larger teaching. We're offering this as our free gift to you no cost, no obligation. We've got this larger teaching that's over 200 pages, and I would really recommend that you get this. We're asking for a donation of any amount for this, and that would really be a blessing. Also, today I talked about this teaching that I've got, You Are Plain as Dirt, and this explains what I was saying here today in more detail. This also is a free gift. So we've got multiple things that we're offering. Please listen to our announcer and he'll give you all of this information. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto. And we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways. But we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Caris Bible College, Toronto. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Grace Partners are special friends of the ministry who commit to giving $30 or more per month to help Andrew reach thousands of people here in Canada and around the world with a life-changing message of God's unconditional love and grace. If you'd like to become a Grace Partner today, go to awmc.ca. 
Thank you for your support. And we look forward to hearing from you today. Coming to Cares has been the best thing that has ever happened to me. I have been fortunate enough to know the Lord, to love the Lord, to know that I wanted to serve Him my entire life. But I felt the Lord calling me and beckoning me to come up higher and to just remove myself from all of the worldly distractions and so that He could speak to me and tell me what His purpose is for my life. So throughout year one at Karis, the Word of God has been sown into me, poured into me, invested in me, and it has truly transformed my life effortlessly. And now that the Word of God is coming alive in me, I am discovering who I am and what my God-given purpose is right here at Karis Bible College. Andrew is offering his booklet, Introduction to Effortless Change, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to please get these products. We've got this free offer, a little 55 page summary. We've got the 200 plus page book that we're offering for a gift of any amount. We have CDs and DVDs and a USB that will have the audio and video. And then we have this 300 plus page book that is made to basically train other people in this. And we have it available not only in English, but we have the same thing in Spanish. So listen to our announcer as they give you this information. Andrew's complete series, Effortless Change, is available as a book or study guide in English or Spanish. This teaching is also available as a CD, DVD album, or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources are available when you contact us. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God and is available as a web-based software that you can access by computer or any mobile device. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Andrew is offering his booklet, You Are Plain as Dirt, as his free gift to you today. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? Follow Andrew on social media today.